Hi guys, um, so today is a little bit unusual because um, I want to restart my videos. I didn't do a video for a long time. Sorry about that, uh, but time is an issue as always. So <clears throat> what I'm going to do today is kind of prepare another video what I'm going to do, what I'm planning to do, which is about the current state on Azure and like the ecosystem of Microsoft, which is to give a um, quick um, preview, which is not the best in my opinion. But I want to um, have some, you know, decent uh, input to that and uh, not just to rant about Microsoft or anything, uh, just to collect stuff that I see uh, during my work. And in order to do that, I recognized one thing that is kind of strange to me is the current versioning of um, Azure resource types. So in order that you don't know what this is, I will explain it beforehand and why I'm going into that. So what I'm trying to do in this session, if you're interested in, I will try without preparation or anything. So it might fail. I would try to come up with a PowerShell script that you guys could use as well, uh, which gives me the information for all the resource types that are there in Azure. Let's say Azure SQL storage account, name it. How the version, um, age of each of those resources is um, uh, dealing with preview versions and stuff like that. So a PowerShell script which does all the work and then outputs happily uh, what's going on. So that means because the, this is talking to Microsoft Graph and stuff like that, so probably it will not be um, a video um, which uh, can go unedited. I think I need to edit it later to just remove the waiting time so it might like get interruption, which is pretty unusual in my time, but in order to make the experience for you better, I would like to do that. So with that, I want to hop over to my screen and explain a little bit more what I mean. So <clears throat> when we go over to the um, to this page here, uh, which I probably will link in the description, Thanks, no. Um, Microsoft Learn gives us uh, this section saying Azure resource providers and types. <clears throat> so it kind of, it's a, it's a nice explanation to be honest. Um, and it tells you, well, what is this all about? So what I'm talking here about is that in case you didn't know, let me hop over to my Azure portal to show you. So I'm here on my home tenant and what um, this is uh, giving me, for instance, is if I go to one of the subscriptions, let's go to the test subscription, let's say, then what you have here in the settings is this list of resource providers. And <coughs> what are those resource providers? So in general, you can say that everything that you can deploy to Azure must be a resource provider or covered by a resource provider in the first place. So resources you are deploying, every resource is one instance of a resource provider. So kind of the resource provider in .NET uh, would be the type and the resource would be an instance of that type, kind of, if that helps you, if you are into programming. However, as you can see, and not many people know that, not all resource providers uh, given you by Azure are um, registered in your tenant by default. So you can at any place in time go and do that and uh, register a resource, resource provider which gives you the option to um, or which which says let's say SQL. As you can see I have a lot of SQL resource providers enabled which means I can deploy resources in this subscription. Beware of those types, but I can currently not provide my SQL discovery um, resource pro, uh, resources. I cannot do that. I will get an error when I try to do it, no matter if I do it with Bicep, PowerShell, Azure Portal, name it. Okay, so <clears throat> the next thing is when I go on one of those resources, let's say Microsoft SQL, which is kind of a bread and butter resource, which is what is interesting is this list here. This is what I'm interested in, which tells you uh, which versions did exist and what is the newest version, what is the newest uh, non-preview version, which kind of highlights what my problem with this is, um, but we come to this later. And um, this list is very interesting. You can see it on other places as well. For instance, if you go to one of those resources, let's say I'm going to a SQL server, and I don't know, Neelix is one of my SQL servers here, thanks 
for that disturbance. Um, and you go to JSON view. Um, for some strange reason, this combo box is never on the latest version. I don't know why. Uh, so it kind of loads those versions and then it's kind of pre-baked into Azure Portal for some reason. So uh, you can see the same list here and this is the newest available version. And uh, then you can see uh, some properties of this resource um, which were uh, configurable in that version. So meaning when I go back in time here, uh, and you, you, by the way, can tell when Microsoft SQL was implemented. Um, anyways, this was the state, those properties were known at this version, which makes it very, very interesting, this information. And um, as you can see easily, if you want to get the information, do I need when Microsoft makes updates? Uh, to, the, to their versions. Do I need to look into this? Is my resource type affected by a recent update? You, you don't get uh, this information um, easy. So that would be a good point. This, um, this article would be a good point if I can automate that to give me a list of my resources, uh, resource types, excuse me, then I could easily get, have track on that. They explain it here, what I showed you, like the resource providers, and then you filter them, and then you see the API versions, and then you can register them. All of this is explained here. As I said, it will be in the description of this article. So interestingly enough, a little bit lower, they said, well, all the information that you can see here, they are um, hovering over to the resource explorer, which is also an interesting thing in the portal. So uh, what you can do is you go to Resource Explorer. Uh, where is it? <clears throat> there you go. And this gives you this um, KQL-like, or is it KQL? I don't even know. I, I think so, this language. So let's go to, I don't know, let's search for uh, SQL. Uh, Microsoft SQL servers. Okay, no. Uh, let's go to Microsoft, uh, as always. This is, where are you? Uh, here you go. So here you go. And then you have probably something like servers. Uh, where is it? Interesting. So here you go. So if you do that, you get this query. It's not, it's, it's, a, it's a REST API, it's not KQL. So it gets you this JSON. Uh, which says, okay, this is what I know about the resource type. Now it's called, uh, or the namespace Microsoft SQL, which gives you the resource types in that namespace. Like operations is one resource type. Uh, and then the next one uh, with API versions. And then the next one is locations. Let's uh, click this down. Capabilities, you can query async operations. A lot of stuff you probably never, never saw. Um, but it's pretty interesting, especially when you're going to do infrastructure as code to see uh, why might it fail, in which regions am I available, and so on. So interesting stuff. So what I want, I want to have a comprehensive list of all those resource types, and then I want to go into the API versions, and then I want to see, okay, um, in an automated way, what is the latest of those versions, and so on, so on. This is what I'm going to do. And for that, you can use, turns out, Azure PowerShell, for instance. So PowerShell is what I'm going to do. So let's hop over quickly and I will minimize the screen to, I prepared a folder and I'm going to VS Code in that folder just to show you uh, what we can do. So let me, and I will share the script for sure when it works, a uh, new file which is, let's start with a test piece one, just uh, make it quick and simple. So they claim that if you execute here uh, this thing, okay, and I execute that, uh, let me bring up my terminal. Um, when I execute this with F8, and I wait a little bit, this is what I mean, it takes some time, it will go to the current subscription, which is in your, um, AZ context configured and it will go over and give you all the resources and you can totally filter this with where uh, to say give me all the registered ones and here is a good starting point that you can say well for all the things I see on my 
subscription or the provider namespaces go into that. So what we also can do is here go get uh, this one is uh, let's say where was it? Uh, this one was kind of interesting here. Um, so it gives you what do I have? This one is interesting. Let me see if I can say give me Microsoft SQL all the resource type names that you are aware of. So let's fire this up. <clears throat> uh -huh. So here you can see what what I was trying to click through. You can see that Microsoft SQL is a big um, a big namespace with all types of resource types. So and I'm interested in servers. I think um, where is it servers? I don't know. Is servers a thing? We will see because now here is this thing. I can copy this and I can say uh, this is I want to Microsoft SQL where object is servers and give me the API versions of that. I hope that this is correct. We will see. Okay, here you go. And this list now programmatically is should be the same that I saw in the no uh, that I saw in the portal. Let's check that. Uh, let's go to back to my SQL. Um, let's go to the JSON. And let's see it starts with I don't know. 2024 May 1st, which is exactly the first one and it goes back to 2014. So and then I can programmatically use this information to make sense out of it. So that's already an interesting thing. So let's keep track of that. So I got this thing, uh, which tells me which resource providers are there. So here you go list available. Um, and then uh, I got maybe all the resource types. Let's see. Okay, when we execute this, uh, select, um, select, uh, probably uh, select object. Okay, I'm good. So uh, let's say this is resource type resource type name. Is that possible? I need to do it. No, this is too much. Um, but we can say, okay, this is uh, namespaces. And then we can go for each NS in namespaces. And then we can go um, uh, types equals get az provider. Let me by the way, get az is resource type of thing. Hello. Oh. Get az resource type. No resource provider. Um, get az resource provider. And can I provide a namespace? Now I can use this namespace that I have. Give me the provider namespace ns. And then for this thing, um, select object um, resource type name. So and then this is types. And let's see when I just execute this. And let's see, I equals zero. Uh, I plus plus uh, if I uh, greater than two. Uh, break. Okay, I'm .NET developer. So let's see, let's store that and let's execute the test PS1. Let's see what's going on. Mm -hmm. Uh, let me do a write host uh, NS. Uh, 
this. Is it better now? Microsoft Azure commands reserve whatever. And then provider namespace and S. Get is not recognized. What? Get Azure resource provider. Provider names. What? The term is not a command. Like, what? Did I? Oh. Typo. Hmm. Okay. 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 The resource namespace blah 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 is invalid. Reason phrase not found. Interesting. Um. So. Oh. Uh, let me see what this is. This is Microsoft Azure commands, commandlets, SDK, whatever. So they are saying the provider namespace um, is select object provider namespace. This is what I need, not the whole thing. So from the first list, I only need the namespace. This is not the namespace. This is the provider itself. So, uh huh. So this is an object provider namespace. Uh, dit, dit, dit. And NS, why is that not working? Let's just execute this. What's coming out of this? This is always my struggle with PowerShell. So it looks pretty good in the first one. It's a list of strings, if you ask me, provider namespace, write host NS. And this is giving my, me, ah, it's an object. Um, uh, this is. I think expand property, select property, is that select object, yes, and then property this, is that making it better, is it now not this freaking object anymore, let's go and check, I don't know if we, hmm. Select property provider namespace. What is that? And then expand. Can I do that? I think expand property gives me the value of that instead of the property object. We don't know. So what's going on now with our script? I hope you can follow along. It's, it's a hacking session. Okay, guys. So mm, I don't know how good this will work out. Microsoft Advisor, okay, cool. Get Azure Resource Provider, select object resource type name, which is, let's say, uh, if I test that directly with Microsoft SQL, I think that was the thing, expand uh, property resource type name, what's going on? Microsoft SQL. Uh, okay. Um, let's go and let's see what this is giving me. So it gives me res oh, resource types. And from resource types. Okay, that means my next thing is resource types. Types equals um, expand property resource types. Okay, and then for each, uh, this is not um, the optimized version, probably. Um, uh, write host. Let's give it a little indention and then something like this and then type. Okay. And then what I can probably do is when I have this provider namespace, can I do what well, was this versioning? Give me some help. Let me see. Okay. 
Okay, this is resource types. This is the easy way of doing it without for each. So here you go. Um, here you go, API versions. So this is then the last one. So what I can do is versions equals this. Uh, provider namespace is the namespace resource types where resource type equals now I have this type. So uh, give me the API versions and then write host. Let's do it with no new line and then write host. Uh, why are you making me so write host um, versions count and then break after whatever. Okay. Let's execute my test script. So this is the namespace. And then the first one is having zero, zero, zero. Oh, uh, probably this is bad. So this is resource type type dot uh, resource type name. This is what I need because this is a property here and I need for string concatenation to do it this way in PowerShell. Uh, let's try again. Let's see if we get data. Microsoft advisor I'm not really interested in, but anyway, suppressions eight configurations, six versions. Okay, here we go. Metadata, 12 versions and so on. So this will take a while, right? Uh, so let's remove the break because it doesn't matter at all, but this is already good. Uh, so <clears throat> with that, um, we are having the loop, which will probably run for some hours <laughs> and uh, give me all of that, all the versions, by type. So what I can do now is I could create a PS object, um, which is my result looping through. Mm, let's see. Um, and I could even mm, namespace. Hmm. Then we get uh, this is resource type. Uh, re resource type ba ba ba, uh, and this is then versions. Okay, so when I have this, I could say that. Let's say, I think they are ordered versions zero. Uh, let's spit out the newest one here, the newest version of that uh, resource type. So resource type this, blah, 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 and then, okay. So, and then let's see if I can make this a little bit better, ah, not now. So let's try it again. How it's looking now. Type suppressions, eight versions, and this is the newest one, six versions, newest one. Here's an alpha, 12 versions, a preview one, which is good. So newest version is preview. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Okay, now, oh, API management. This is interesting. This is the first real preview is the newest one, 2023. Locations, that's interesting. Let it work a, lot, a while. Deleted services. The, the other thing I want to know is, is this running without uh, hitting a threshold? Um, because sometimes you get uh, query thresholds on Azure. So I just recognize that my face is out of the way, kind of. 
uh, when I lean forward. Do I need to fix my camera? This was the wrong direction, maybe this is the right one. No, that's not even making it better. Oh, guys, okay, maybe this. I'm not sure. Yeah, kind of. Okay, so let's stop here. This is a nice starting point. Um, so now what I always need to find out uh, is PowerShell PS object. Uh, this is kind of a new object versus PS custom object. I think PS custom object is what I want to have. Dear permission is this new object in PS2 is new PS object property. Okay, so this is for each deer in deer permissions this new object ps object property path 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 uh, and then deer permissions so this is what i want to have let me check this um and i think there's this add member thingy so <clears throat> what i can do is um results equals this is an array i think this is how it works let me see so what i have is um this is uh version info is this a new object is not liked by him new object This is another way to do that. PS custom object. So what is he complaining about? Uh huh. Oh, ah, better. This new object. So this is then my property name, which is just okay. I don't know. This is uh, namespace. And then what equals yes equals ns is there a comma no then my next one is uh, resource type equals type uh, dot so this is namespace ns type dot resource type name and then i can say versions is just versions so with that, I can say uh, results plus equals uh, version info. And after each loop, I will just write host the results is that working. Let's see, is that even doing anything useful? <laughs> so after this first namespace it should give me the output I can speed it up a little bit in a second okay uh, for each type in type so probably I need to results 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 I need to break on the first and break on the first. So I just want one. Is that breaking the inner loop or all loops? I don't know. It should do one request and break out. Here we go. This is what I wanted to see. So uh, now it breaks. It has this PowerShell object thingy. It means that we have this nice table where we can say for each uh, on that, on this results, and then we have like the properties in a nice way. And in fact, in theory, what this does is it's like writing a class. Uh, I think it's like writing a class in uh, C sharp because PowerShell is based on .NET. In principle, a lot of stuff is based on .NET. So we create a new type in PowerShell um, in that way and give it properties so that we can access it better. So good. 
so means here that means we uh, collected all data so <clears throat> nice so what we can do is um, we can now say that um, let's see newest version equals version zero and then what I'm interested in uh, is uh, newest stable equals versions uh, and then where and this is interesting because this all I always struggle with that this is so bad um, how is that is it this one oh. versions where contains a dash is that what I can do and then new stable zero what happens let's see is that even work no into null array cannot index into null array okay so this is <coughs> hmm. um ah this should work so that is wrong so if I have an array, let's say x equals a new array of a, b, and c, um, x where, is that correct, contains b. Da, 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 da. Yeah, that works. And we're not contained B. What is this? I like that. This is exactly what I want. Okay. So if now versions were not contained this. This is a stable versions. Let's say this is it. And then I say new is stable is when a new PowerShell I can do the ternary, I think. Stable versions. Then stable versions zero. Give me the first one. Should be sorted still. Otherwise, uh, no. Is that working? Let's try. I hope you have fun. This is the first time I do something like that where I don't know. Okay. Uh, oh, dash. Dash is not the best way to do it. <laughs> yeah, I get it. So dash is this one. Mm. What is that? Uh, not contains alpha uh, and not. Uh, is that how I do it? Contains preview. I'm not sure. I think this is this. A regex should be maybe better. Here, <clears throat> we can do that later. Let's do it simple. So new stable is that. I got it. So uh, that looks good. Now we have all those objects. And what I'm going to do now, um, I will say um, results convert to JSON. How does that look like? Because it's always a good idea. 
uh, convert to <clears throat> Now, okay, uh, results, because I'm dumb. Anyways, this is us having fun. So I have a nice JSON thing, uh, which I'm not very happy with, because why isn't that an array? So, um, you know what? What I will do now is we can totally let this run now so that later we can say we call that with a parameter which says, hey, well, I just queried it. Don't go to the API, just read in the results directly. So what I'm going to do is I will remove the breaks. One more thing. There is this nice because I need to know how long does it take. So PowerShell write progress yeah so there is this white mm, i already searched about that uh, so give me an example write process exhibit uh, status is zero percent complete so why not write progress so uh what i want to do i want to say uh collecting what is that? Uh, namespaces. So, and this 0% complete um, is completion. And here you go. And what I need to do is completion as uh, uh, da, 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 da. this is. 100% is the amount of namespaces, namespaces length, and then a counter. Let's uh, invent a counter. i is zero, again, i plus plus. So that means it makes, oh no, here, i plus plus. And then completion is i divided by uh, namespaces count, kind of uh times 100 i think is that correct i don't even know let's see how this looks so the thing will come up when in the first namespace is read in let's see but it could work out maybe not in i don't know if this is working inside of vs code of the terminal of VS Code, we will see. <laughs> Divide by zero. Hmm. Oh, because I'm an idiot. So let's say uh, namespaces count and I will add one thing which is pretty important for PowerShell scripts. Error action preference uh, is uh, stop, which is telling the whole script if an error occurs, like he, he just went over to the next one, there's an exception. So whenever an unhanded exception occurs here, it will stop the execution of the complete thing, which is a good thing. Uh, let's redo that and again we have to wait a little bit this time bear with me because the good news is maybe we get a progress maybe Activity. what is wrong with me why is this uppercase come on oh yeah it's a percentage, 0.33. This is not good, but let's see, is that working? Come on. Is that changing? So I may have to 
API management is a big one. Mm -hmm. So this will take several hours, I think, if it runs. So maybe when I do the next uh, recording, yeah, it seems to be somehow to work. Um, but still, let's do another thing. I think it's a good idea to say, uh, you know what? Let's do that right away. And let's remove this, this, and this. And then let's see, can I round this up? Is that um, PowerShell round down? Yeah. What? Uh, where is it? Math floor. This is now .NET again. Uh, math floor. Uh, let's see, is that working? Math floor 0 0.333 is zero. Thank you. So math floor of that gives me a completion. And now let's open a real terminal here because for reasons. And let's see, uh, maybe collecting namespace ns. So I have the namespace. So, and then write this to a file. Um, set content uh, in this folder, test JSON. I think that is how it's working. Uh, and we can test it out now. If I gt1 uh, break. So this is uh, how was write progress. There was a there was a clear write progress, and then there was something to display. Display. How can I clear the progress? Oh. Oh, you can have this and sub steps. Mm. Stuff I need to try out, but not now. Uh, completed current ID, parent ID. Cool, cool, cool. And how can I? How can I clear progress? I think this is just maybe writing null. Uh, okay, what is this saying? Oh, completed. Trying out. And let's do the test piece one here. I know all of this is totally unnecessary, but I will have a timeline in my video. You can skip all of that or you can watch me doing it. So I lost complete uh, my shying away thingy from doing stuff like that because I'm also watching YouTube videos and people are constantly showing hours and hours of doing uninteresting stuff and I'm not shying away from doing this here as long as I give you the option to skip if you want to see the results. Okay. Dun, 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 dun. Should I do the sub progress? <laughs> do you want me to do that? Huh. ID is zero, and this is J is zero, and then I have J plus plus. 
let's see, instead of this, J++, this time it is J types count times 100, write progress ID is 1, parent ID is 0, activity collecting types, type, type, where is it? Resource type name. Let's do that. Oh, I'm so... Did he do it? I have a test JSON. I like that. And the progress bar disappeared. I like that. So, semi completion. This is, let's say, type completion. We need to be careful. And then. ID is zero, and after that, ID is one completed. So what now? Please work. Please do it. Oh, oh I like that. <laughs> I like that. This is what makes me remember how it was to get into programming. <laughs> it's so stupid, guys, but I love that kind of stuff. I really do. 100% is kind of not 100%. Got it. Um, so that's not good. 6%, 13, 20. 26, 33, 40, it's not doing anything. So what is that? Uh, person complete is type completion, activity collecting type. Maybe it should be good to have this and this in place. Uh, status is type completion complete. 93%. Where is my progress bar? Person complete. Uh, and by the way, I should see my JSON. Here you go. This is getting big. This file will be mm, great. New stable is now. Yeah, works. It doesn't have anything. Not bad, not bad. I like it. Uh, however, Why is my completion not correct? Type completion, percent complete. What, what is going on? Write progress. <clears throat> May I do that? Can I execute this as it is? Just real quick. This looks good. No, it doesn't. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's do a return here. Let's stop it. And let's execute it in a real shell. What's going on? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Aha! As I said, this is working, but the PowerShell of this one is not really working. So, shout out to so that means, I think, we can happily go and rename that to collect PS1. Uh, oh, why not? So this is collect PS1. It's not ready. Execute collect PS1. Do it. Mm hmm. Did I have a break in it still? We will see. Good. Good. Let me check. There's a break here. 
anyways so this is my script now and with that i will let it run pause the video probably it's getting dark in the meantime <clears throat> so it's sunday by the way um this is what we do on sundays right <clears throat> and i don't know if um like there will be private appointments so i don't know how late it gets so don't be disturbed when i look completely different when i come back sorry about that okay so that is part one if you will and we will uh analyze the data when this thing ran through so with that i'm going to pause the video see you later So, um, mm, oh, so as you can see, um, it is uh, done. Mm, so let's see, what am I doing here? Uh, so let's see, this is a JSON created, which is pretty big, 1.6 gigabytes, is that correct? Man, what did I do? Is that really what it is? No, 1.6 megabytes, okay. I'm glad. <laughs> okay, so test JSON is there. So why I did that, and as you can see, it's still um, it's still uh, not dark here. So it uh, take about I think it took about like three hours or something. <clears throat> okay, but I did this because now what I can do I can improve my script a little bit so that it's improved for you as well. So let's see. This is uh, let's say that this is the function uh, download uh, dash uh, download versions uh, and then let's give it this one to be here okay so param, which is, uh, this is uh, output file name equals uh, test or results dot json. Is it possible? Okay, download versions, which is complaining because it's not, uh, it's an unapproved verb. So get versions better. So now he's fine. So now we have this as a function. And what we can do here is, do we have param block? Is that, yeah, command led binding. So this is, um, this is the parameter saying, um, type name is string, let's see. Uh, existing file so let's see if not existing file then uh, get the set get versions whatever get versions so in any case, what I can do is uh, <coughs> existing file equals, uh, maybe this is better, uh, slash results JSON. So I will take an output file name and make it by default dot dot. So that is this. Okay, so now it should be there. And what I can do is uh, get content.raw existing file convert from JSON. Uh, and this is content equals. So this is now that and let's just write the content so what he should do now is he should collect p oh, results should name it results json collect ps1 now should simply 
not do it. Oh, uh, wait a minute. Stop it, stop it. Collect PS1 existing file. Uh, dot results JSON. So yeah, that's working. Okay, so he's now, when I call it with existing file, he will automatically uh, just get it out. So, and then what I can do is content select, let's say object property. So what does it have? Uh, it should have resource type and uh, newest version uh, format table. So how does that look? Oh, yeah. So um, that's kind of nice. So now I have the newest version. And then uh, can I do... <coughs> okay. Da, 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 da. So now that I have that, I could maybe make it a little bit better but because I forgot to, to put calculated properties in. So what I can do is, I think, let's get the H. So um, what I'm going to do is for each entry in content. So <laughs> let's go and say uh, type equals um, entry and this is resource type. Okay. And then uh, H equals oh no, um, newest version date equals let's say entry newest version uh, newest version is there a substring? Should be entering this version. What is that? Should be a string. Um, get uh, date. Uh, da, 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 da. How do I do that? Substring zero dot four five six seven eight nine ten. Is that a thing? Hmm. Uh, uh -huh. Right host just to see if this works. Type uh, followed by. I think it's not going to work. Probably not. Hmm. Mm. How do I know if it's working? It's not bad. So, uh, H equals get date. Subtract newest version date H um, probably total days let's see that it is um, 
Uh, and then I probably need to do that total days as a decimal. I know total days. And then let's see. Um, H sum plus no. H sum plus equals H and average H equals uh, H sum divided by content count write host average H of newest version average age days is not nice but you know what I mean hmm you cannot call a method on a null value so content uh, which one is it it is content count measure object dash uh, that is it and then count better no uh, probably this is because this is not uh, mm -hmm. no valued expression okay let's see uh, amount equals that one right, amount of average age right host found amount resource types okay let's see how it goes uh, he's probably here a little bit overwhelmed no. So content for each entry in content, blah, blah, blah. Uh, where is it failing? I'm guessing it fails. Measure object content count. Hmm. Content is get content. Convert from JSON. And then I can cycle through that. What is content um, showing us? What the heck is going on? Oh, something here. Uh, what is going wrong? He's cycling through. And then, oh, at locations, oh, here we go. That means uh, I'm an idiot again. So meaning that after locations, he gets a problem because um, newest version date. So uh, if newest version date, then probably it's that else. Write host type has no newest version date, whatever. Uh, foreground color yellow. Uh, let's see. yellow okay so let's do again cannot bind property 
Uh, amount is measure object count found amount. So let's see, is this working? Ugh. Can I convert the blah blah blah? Value of type PS2 type PowerShell commands PS property expression. Hmm. Maybe measure object is not fine. I am so overwhelmed sometimes with what PowerShell can and cannot do. See? So, uh, probably you PowerShell pros will say what's wrong with you. So, here you go. If I'm true, the average age, average age of over all resource types is average days, days. It's 655 days on average. Okay, so that's interesting. That's what one of the questions I had. Um, and I wanted to answer with uh, this tool. So I'm now able, and that's what I'm talking about. Um, I'm now able to understand uh, what's going on. So if I say, for instance, uh, let's add a parameter to that to say, um, uh, resource type filter. So that is an array, is that possible? Yeah, uh, equals uh, now or I mean, so let's say while cycling, we are saying um, if resource type filter and uh, so um, so we have a resource type and saying if resource type filter contains uh, not contains the entry uh, resource type, then continue. So what I should now be able to do is resource type filter is in PowerShell, something like, let's say, Microsoft SQL uh, found 4005, where's found? Uh, okay, mm, that is not what it is. Um, then maybe, uh, what is that? Microsoft, oh, it's probably lowercase here. So I'm not doing it correctly, maybe this way. No, maybe. Uh, What is my uh, SQL servers? Server? No. What was my resource type? Mm -mm -mm. Mm. Did I have it here? So maybe I should also order this in some way. And C sharp, I would be better with that. But you know, it is what it is. So let's. Uh, find um, Microsoft SQL. So it is namespace and then, oh, um, mm -hmm. Microsoft SQL and then this. So that's a good thing. Um, so um, what we should do is uh, we should say type is a combination of the entry resource type and in front of that, we should say, hey, what, take the entry uh, 
uh, namespace do a slash and then add this one so now the type is this and then what we could do is we can call it with Microsoft SQL that's mm, maybe this way no so what this is is Microsoft SQL servers here you go <clears throat> there it is so now i can filter on interesting types so saying i want to know and then let's see mm -mm -mm. Uh, filtered items is zero so if that happens then filtered items plus plus and filtered h sum is this okay so we should do we should do this in any case and we don't need to do it here anymore. And this means that filtered H sum plus equals this one. So, <clears throat> and we say is filtered is false. Oh, we are not in C sharp. And here we say <clears throat> no, we know that is filtered is um, null equals this and not equals. If is filtered, okay, and then what we say is um, if is filtered uh, else this is else mm -hmm. and then we can do that uh, in total and then this is uh, right host um Fil filtered items uh, resource types match the filter and then average age and then filtered average age is filtered age sum divided by uh, filtered items and then average age over uh filtered resources is this let's see uh microsoft sql server is 144 uh what the heck where's my total days uh average age is h sum that uh, total days Why is that? Uh, probably here too. To be sure. Do it again. And oh no. Uh, that makes no sense. Mm. Found. Why? If is filtered. Ah, uh, found in total. Average age overall. So it's, it's filtered is wrong. Here it's okay. So he did the filtering. 
Mm -hmm. Total is okay. But now he should not go here because this is clear. This makes no sense. If is filtered, else this. So he's not doing average age over uh, filtered resources. So I don't get it. Is filtered. Okay. Can I see is filtered? Is filtered. Mm. See, well, I'm so dumb. Sorry. Is days found for match the filter? What? Filtered items. Oh, if it contains the type. That's interesting. Mm -hmm. But <clears throat> what I don't get is isn't continue. Continuing with the next loop in a for each. He should. See. Okay, right to output equals true, equals true. Now we can say if right to output. Okay. So that is the same, that's good. So and now we can say, well, actually, I'm, I want this to be this condition here contains. So I have this and I would like to have a lambda expression right now. Um, but I can't. So maybe I should do that with C sharp later. But what I could do is I could say no, I cannot do that. No, no way. Contains um, type. Yeah, so I need to be very precise. Okay, that's that's fine. So let's see Microsoft storage accounts. Whoa. Accounts 
let's see what this is doing okay no uh, so I need to know Microsoft storage mm -hmm. Microsoft storage is correct storage accounts totally what I would have named it uh, so it's you know this is something Microsoft SQL server but Microsoft storage storage account you know what I mean I don't get it and plural okay plural is okay it's 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 the same so here we go storage accounts I'm interested in that so now we have the average between those so what we can do now is we could write another script which collects all the resource types we are using in our subscription um, and build an array for that. Uh, should we do that? We are already pretty long into the video. How much is it like one and a half hours total recording time? I will squeeze it. So maybe we should do that. Um, so um, what we can do is resource filter and we can do um, switch uh, which is no leave me alone let's do a switch named auto detect uh, auto filter uh, current subscription types whatever so that means before we check that if existing file, blah, blah, blah. If bup, 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 is present, if that is present, we need to say, hmm, let's find out how this works. Get a Z resource. What's there? C. Uh, select uh, object. Uh, property uh, let's say resource type here we go and then uh, can we do that distinct um, uh, remove no. okay uh, PowerShell how is it going PowerShell uh, remove duplicates from array uh, split select unique oh um can i just do that that would be great nice like it so that's all it takes so meaning we can say this is the filter where is it source type filter Yes, this now. Hmm. Let's see. <sighs> Collect. Uh... Hmm. Attempt to divide by zero. That is not good. Hmm. What is that? Resource type filter is this. That is an array, right? So maybe it is uh, select object and expand property. Or maybe this is what I need again. Maybe it's simply ha. Huh. Okay, the filter. Here we go. And those are the resources, so 729 days. So, okay, cool. I have this subscription. So guys, this is uh, interesting. Let's make the output a little nicer uh, by just saying write host. So whatever. Uh, okay, so nice. This is, and by the way, no. Uh, what this is is, um, Where's my PowerShell object? Let's see. 
Where is uh, da, 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 da. so let's do that correctly. If it's filtered, and then oh, here it is. Um, so that is um, resource type is type. Uh, by the way, type is like a little bit. No, it's okay. And then uh, newest version date is newest version date is entry newest version then So I can say uh, newest version. Maybe I need to be a little bit careful here. Because that could easily go wrong if um, now equals then maybe continue okay so now i have the newest version and this is now has no newest version date this is now here early exit Good. This is no longer needed. Okay. And then uh, what we need to do is output uh, items is this and then Items plus equals mm -hmm. uh, item and then plus e okay, and then all I need to do is uh, output items format table let's see i'm not sure i'm totally not sure yeah, 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 yeah. newest version date and this is uh, dot date what about that hmm. uh, uh, two uh, short date string or not dot net better uh, this is the newest version okay see uh, this is has no version date okay uh, we can fix that later so now we know what's not in there and he says and age is a thing uh, where is that? Um, H is H. Uh, no. So meaning, okay, uh, H total days. And this is probably math, where will math, math, round something it should be math round this time where is that h h h h h where is h calculated h s okay 
map round this thing zero. What's going on? Oh, round and the argument count two. Isn't there precision on math round? What is this? Not good. What is math round saying? Can I get information about that? No. Um, let me see. C sharp math round. There's probably another math round system. It takes double in 32 mid map rounding double in 32. So this and that. Uh, oh, mm, total days probably. Let's see. Ugh, stupid. So this is, yeah, this is now already this age. Okay, we need to do the same thing over and over again. Filtered H sum is this, then this is now no longer needed. Probably. Let's see. Where's my H here? And H is just the H. Mm -hmm. So now why is that? Uh, oh, it's still That this one uh -huh. so now it's rounded and now I could say do that as an int uh, this is probably system and then Uh, C sharp system no. convert double to int and this is system convert to int convert system convert ah here you go to to int 32 of that thing. Dear Lord. So here we go. Yes. And then now we have the full days. That's nice. H. And this is this. And we could now see that. <clears throat> okay, this is exactly spoken over all uh, stable resource types, filtered stable resource types. So that is uh, the stable age. So that means, yeah. So we are almost done. Stable age is this in date. So to the latest stable version. So but then there is another thing we need to calculate, which is the preview um, age. So what we need to do is newest version date, date to string. And then we can say, this is Let's say newest stable version. Where's newest version? Newest version. Newest version. Newest stable version. Mm -mm -mm. Mm -hmm. And newest version is. Ay, ay, ay. Is. 
entry, let's see, entry dot uh, version. I think it was dot versions zero. Uh, Okay. Newest stable. Guys, I'm sorry for that. I try to cut it out. You, but you know, if I cut it out, I don't need to be <laughs> sorry for anything. Uh, but, um, you know, I'm fighting. And then I have newest version date. That is that. It should always be there. So newest version date is get date entry versions zero because I had no, I had newest version. Perfect. Uh, entry newest version and this is newest stable. don't have any oh see no new resources interesting they don't have anything let's see mm -hmm. da, 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 da. where Ah, we, because of new stable version. Mm -hmm. this then it's get date of that thing do I need to put parentheses here not sure yeah I need okay let's see is it better now no substring parameter length entry new stable newest version uh, <laughs> so this is write me this and write me this so I probably got lost so here you go newest version is 2 new stable is 2 how is that possible new stable the stable version stable version is 2 Huh. Seriously? That's interesting. There's one, the last one, which is 
give me entry resource type. So now we are doing role assignment schedule request. What is this? Newest stable two. Mm. Should be this. So I um, new stable here is wrong, which means new stable is table stable version. Stable version is versions where not alpha and not contains versions. It has versions, those two, and then. Hmm. Wait a minute. When I do this, x equals uh, first thing is this second thing is this this is my array right so when i do x this what happens i get this this is stable versions. And when I do from that, when I say y equals this, so what is y zero? Oh, no. No, because it is an empty array. It, it's, it's an array of one. It only has ones. Oh, I hate PowerShell sometimes. So this is happening because x was an array. And then when it comes to the point, then oh, no, uh, so that it returns only one thing, then it is not an array anymore. It's the one thing. And when I do the indexing, the one thing is a string. When I do the indexing, I get the first character of the string. So thank you. Um, which means, um, If stable versions get type uh, equals system string stable versions is an array of stable versions. I don't even know what I what this means. I know what this means, but I don't even know. Let's do a little bit reasonable stuff. Convert to array if result had only one string. So can I can I do this? If can I run this now? What is y get type get type name so we can get rid of this of course and we can get rid of this so now let's do what is y true and then y equals at y what is y now? Oh 
Okay. That's exactly it. Are we going there? Debugging for, okay. Uh, no. Uh, substring somewhere is substring called oh get versions stable versions already messed up no 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 please not I already build it uh, yeah so I will rebuild this Probably. Yeah, I will rebuild this and run it again. Uh, meaning what I will do is um, I will do my dot slash collect ps1 and I will just let it run and collect. Let's see. Are you doing it? Okay, we will see if this runs and I will again come back. Hi, uh, it's me from the intermediate future, if you will. Um, so I decided uh, to do it differently. So while the script is running, I think the main information which is important here is that I just now have the opportunity to see how old the API versions of the resources really are. So why I'm doing that is now I come to my first of my points. And as I said, I will do an additional video later uh, which will link um, um, to this video. And what this will be about is uh, my complaint that Azure is changing resources a lot over time. Okay, so we have updates, uh, resource types. We have update on those resource types and so on. And what I want to show is, first of all, that Microsoft has some products which have for two years and more uh, outdated uh, stable versions. So we don't have stable versions, we have preview versions, which is kind of pointing into a certain direction. And the problem with uh, this is uh, that I'm feeling currently, and I want to emphasize this in my upcoming video, um, this, uh, this is just one part of it, this version thing. And what I want to show is that this is not a good state we are in because um, it used to be a pretty short time between stable updates in the beginning of Azure. And now I don't know why, probably due to personal shortages, um, other priorities at Microsoft, um, AKA AI currently. So time of recording is 2024. So uh, if you see that in, in the forthcoming future, so that I, you understand what I'm talking about. So all of this uh, complaints that I have and struggles that I have in my daily work will be part of that other video. Here in that video, I just wanted to show how um, I uh, tackle the problem, how I quantify the problem on resource type versions. I know it was a long one, but um, you know, uh, pardon me, I wanted to show how I tackled it. I will share my code um, on GitHub and I will put the link in the description so that you can guys follow up. Uh, it was kind of long and I tried to, um, as I said, to do a good timeline there. I hope it helps somebody and maybe somebody wanted to see me struggle with PowerShell. 
uh, I'm sorry, but uh, I'm a .NET guy mainly and PowerShell is like, I use it when I have to. So you, you could uh, see that. But anyways, um, hopefully it was fun if you watched it so far and show me in the comments what you think about that and how your experiences are. And um, yeah, um, let's see if we um, uh, see us, uh, each other in my forthcoming video. Thanks.